Evan weighs in as to who the most important players on the Buccaneers are this season. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. Your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this WTSP Wednesday edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day we want to thank you for making locked on bucks your first listener view every single day don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on youtube and wherever you get your podcasts and of course you can follow us on twitter i am james yarko at jarko underscore bucks deputy editor of sb nations bucks nation.com joined by my wednesday partner in crime mr evan klosky on twitter at e klosky wtsp you can find him at 10 tampa bay.com and on 10 Tampa Bay. We are credentialed members of the media covering your Buccaneers. We are here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers. And as always, we want to share our appreciation for your continued support of the show. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Key matchups and week one predictions. Coming up a little bit later, but first, we're going to get Evan's take on some of the things that David and I have been talking about on this show this week. And of course, David and I named our most important players on offense and defense on yesterday's show. So if you haven't caught that, make sure you go back and you listen where I give a massive number dump and breakdown as to how big of a year Rashad White is about to have. While David talked about the massive impact of Antoine Winfield Jr., being on the field, but Evan, even though David and I each named three players, I am curious to hear who you feel is going to be vital to the success of the Buccaneers this season. So with quarterback off the table, who is your most important offensive player? Uh, You you know, you kind of alluded to it with Rashad White. Uh, And there are, there are a lot of guys that are on my list of importance, but if, the Buccaneers offense is going to be predicated on running the ball like we think they're going to be, as that being a pillar of success, then you have to have success with White. Not to mention, at this point, it seems like Rashad White is in the bell cow role. I think you might see Chase Edmonds thrown in there on third downs, maybe two-minute drills, what Giovanni Bernard was supposed to be when he was with the Buccaneers. You might see him uh, get get a blow for blow in that regard, at least in the first half. But if they want to have success, and of course, you know, White and a couple of, you know, I wanted to kind of say maybe Robert Hainsey, um, stepping he into was, that center role. He was my other most important yeah, offensive player. Yeah, he really is because you're going to have to make sure you get everything set there with the O-line. So that kind of goes hand in hand. But what White can do as a runner and as a catcher out of the backfield, he is a special, special player. And I just think that um, he's going to have to step up. And maybe as the season goes along, Sean Tucker can insert himself a little bit more in in some first and second down roles to really give White a, a breather. But uh, he he Rashad White's gonna have every opportunity to to be the head of the snake here in this Buccaneers offense and allow that play action, the waggles, all the stuff that Dave Canales wants to do to really screw up the defenses. That's gonna be predicated on Rashad White really delivering and making defenses scared of him and what he can do and allowing Mike Evans and Chris Godwin to be wide open and do what they do best. And that's really take advantage of yards after catch and, uh, and and have defenders a little bit uh, off of them a bit because they're so committed to that run game. So if I had to pick one, It's Rashad White, though. I accept arguments on a lot of players, and I'll probably agree with anything you would tell me uh, with some of those guys as well. Yeah, and I'm not going to do the full number dump again, uh, but for those that didn't hear the episode, I I took Kenneth Walker, the third's numbers from last year in Seattle. You figure the offense, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be pretty similar. 
Kenneth Walker the third on the field for about 53% of offensive snaps. Of the snaps where he was on the field, he touched the ball 44% of the time. So Rashad White, massive workload this year, which is why I just traded for him in one of my fantasy leagues. Already? Because, oh, yes. Already oh, yes. we got trades. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my son made the terrible mistake of trading Garrett Wilson for Amon Ross St. Brown, but we're not going to get into that right now. What we are going to get into is who you think the most important defensive player for the Buccaneers to have success this season is? You know, I think you guys are very smart because defensively, uh, first off, let me say a caveat. I think the most important thing defensively uh, are Jamel Dean and Carlton Davis staying healthy. I cannot begin yeah. to reiterate how screwed the Bucs are at cornerback if one of them goes down. So number one is their health. Um I don't know if one is more important than the other. I just think both of them need to be on the field. They're paid significant money, and they desperately need them to step up and be there every single game. So if there was one position that you told me, hey, we will make one position group fully healthy the entire year, I, I think cornerback might be it. Because the drop-off between Carlton Davis and and uh, and Jamel Dean between what, what the third – option would be is so large so let me just say that's one so that's not really a player that's more of a health related thing if i had to go to a player it's antoine winfield jr right they just moved him to a you guys are smart uh, you they just moved him from this swiss army knife role to say hey we're gonna have you play center field again we need turnovers 30 turnovers has always been our goal. We need them. And what you can do with your versatility is not as important as what we can use you as to create more turnovers. So that's pretty darn big uh, to, to kind of shift his role, which I thought he was an almost, if it wasn't for injuries, he was on an all pro track the yeah. first couple of months there of, of how they were utilizing him. So they took him kind of out of that to say, we're going to make your role a lot easier and we just need you to help us turn the ball over. So he's also had injury concerns throughout his career, especially with concussions. Even right now, we think he's going to play on Sunday, but, you know, not a given. He is also in a contract year. There's a lot of incentive for him to, to play extraordinarily well. So... I think he is a, a, a pillar of that defense. Um, you know, I I would love to see Kalijah Cansey first, but but I would say Cansey might be might be one B in my eyes because if Cansey can perform the way that we think he can, let's say he's fully healthy, what he's going to be able to do with Vita Vea in the trenches will open up Tryon Shanka, Shaq Barrett, Nelson on the edges. They will now have one-on-one -on -one blocks um, because all the focus will be on the interior. That's also going to help the, the, the rushing defense. You're also going to finally get some north and south pressure in the pocket, which is something the Bucks have lacked the past couple of years. So can see and what he can do on that defensive front is pivotal, pivotal for the Bucks to really get back to being a disruptive defensive team to what we saw in 2020 when this won the Super Bowl, um, they really dominated there in the trenches. And that was a combination of what was happening inside, which allowed Devin White and Shaquille Barrett to really blossom into uh, fantastic blissers uh, that season. Yeah, and, and to your point about the secondary, that was my – position group with the most approved for exactly what you said. The depth is such a huge question mark that those guys all have to step up. And, uh, you know, just in case Carlton Davis or Jamel Dean go down, which is given the, the history more Especially likely. with Carlton. Yeah. Yeah. So it is time to get in to the week one matchup between the Buccaneers and the Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what are the nice, key, to, nice to hear you, little John. So what are the key matchups that can give either team the edge? That's next on Locked On Bucks, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team 
every day. From their legendary high-quality razors to skin products like exfoliating face wash and hydrating lotion, Harry, Harry's gives you a premium shave without the premium price tag. I just told you guys my sad father story where I had to realize that my son was old enough to shave and I had to teach him to do so. Well, in order to do that, he needed razors. So what did I do? I got him the starter set, which is a $13 value for just $3 at harrys.com slash NFL. It includes a five blade German engineered razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover, which will come in handy since hockey season starting and we're going to have to go on the road. Scheduled delivery for refills as low as $2 half of what you would pay for other blades. Harry's makes the skincare products that will give you the best shave ever. Creams, washes, and lotions that will keep your skin healthy and hydrated. Get your best shave ever this summer with Harry's razors and skincare products. Get a $13 starter set for just $3 at harrys.com slash NFL. That's harrys.com slash NFL for a $3 starter set. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every single day. Every day, or be sure you are coming back tomorrow as David will be talking to Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings for the crossover Thursday of the season. In the meantime, though, the Locked On Ultimate NFL Season Preview is here. The seven-episode extravaganza brings opinions, analysis, plenty of debate from all 32 of our Locked On NFL hosts with added insights from our national experts and me, schooling the other NFC South hosts for their blatantly uneducated opinions about the Buccaneers. Since can't miss series before the season kicks off. Catch every episode on Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. But Evan, it is finally time for us to start talking about the game. Yes, a week one game, a real game, as the NFL season gets underway and the Bucs head to Minneapolis to take on the Vikings. David has pounded the table all offseason long that the Vikings record last season was inflated and they weren't as good as what their record says that said they were. However, they have the best receiver in football. And they're putting their run game in the hands of Alexander Madison after getting rid of Dalvin Cook. So there's plenty of key matchups across this game. But what is the matchup that you are looking at where the Vikings have the clear advantage over Tampa Bay? Well, uh, first off, I agree with David. Uh, they're infl- I think they went, what, like 7-0, 8-0 in, in- – one score games or something. It might have even been like ten and zero. It was yeah, something- it, it was something egregious. So yeah, there's a little bit of that, including the greatest comeback in the history of the NFL last year against the Colts. Um, so agreed. Justin Jefferson is the toughest matchup for for any team. So I'm just not. I'm not even going to mention that. Uh, even with Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean, like it doesn't matter. That guy's you're going to have to double him. So. Um, I think I'm focused in on TJ Hawkinson, Ooh. Vikings versus the Bucks linebackers. I thought last year the Bucks were not as good against tight ends, um, even though we all respect Levante and Devin White and what they can do. Um, I, I think, you know, even if you go back to like that Browns, there was some, which was a, a tremendous play. There still was a, a lot of moments last year where I thought the tight end took advantage of the Buccaneers defense. And uh, especially for a team that struggles defensively in, in some third and longs for inexplicable reasons. Uh, I imagine that if you're going to take Justin Jefferson out or attempt to, you know, try to limit his abilities as best as you can. You can't you can't double or do anything crazy with TJ Hawkinson. He just got paid a fat contract, and uh, he you know he's going to be motivated to live up to that contract. So, to me, I'm a bit worried about what his impact will be in this contest against the Bucks and what Minnesota will scheme up to to kind of have him play an integral role in in this in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, that's a really, really solid point. Usually, we've we've looked at the matchup of Levante David versus a tight end or Devin White versus the tight end, and it's it's been advantage Buccaneers, right? But you're 100% right. Last year, 
there were some struggles there. And, you know, you mentioned the the Cleveland game. David and Joku just kind of went off and, you know, they they have struggled. So it'll be interesting to see if if they're able to bounce back and, and kind of recapture the way they were, you know, in 2020 and 2021. Uh, as far as being able to really shut down the tight ends. And and maybe it's not fair for those of you watching on YouTube where I kind of shook my head when you were talking about you know limiting Justin Jefferson. Maybe it's not fair for me to discount Carlton Davis completely in this. Because, I mean, and I love Carlton Davis, but Jefferson is Jefferson. But then again, Jamar Chase is Jamar Chase. And Carlton Davis did a phenomenal job against Jamar Chase last year before the wheels of the entire team just fell off. Thanks a lot, Gio Bernard. Um, but and Bucks- I do, and I do want to mention this. Uh, I just found a stat that I was looking for. Uh, the Bucks gave up 89 receptions, 940 yards, Oof. and 11 touchdowns to tight ends last year. Oof. Yeah. It's not great, Bob. That's, that's not what you love to see. Um, and in most game, I mean, very rarely, I think a, a couple of games they held the opponent to, or they had a stretch where they held four tight end groupings to 20 or less yards. But there's a lot of games where they hung around in between the, the 30 to the 70 range. And then there were a couple of 100ers uh, out there. So, but the, the, the touchdown number is really concerning uh, yeah. when thinking about the red zone. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to be something to keep an eye on. But the Bucs have to be able to counterpunch somewhere. So you take a look at this game and what the Buccaneers have to offer. What matchup are you looking at where the Bucs have the clear advantage over Minnesota? Um, My clear advantage is going to be at wide receiver. Uh, The Vikings were one of the worst passing defenses in the league last year. And even though... Tampa Bay is not going to be flinging the rock all over the field like we were used to seeing. That still doesn't mean that they're not going to be explosive in the opportunities that they have. So we heard from Dave Canales early in the week, right? You don't have to be special all the time. I just need you to be special. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see I'm holding up my hands very, you know, tiny, like eensy weensy. You just got to be special that many times. So Evans and Godwin are going to have a few opportunities in this game to really make a monster play. I think that's going to be there for this team. So I think wide receiver against this team, you got to, even though it may not be your MO, you got to play uh, to their to their weak spot and, and poke them where it hurts. And that means you better be looking at Evans and Lockett um, a little bit more than maybe what we'll see when you you go over the course of the year. Yeah, I, I mean, I at first in my brain because sometimes my brain decides not to work. When you said the Buccaneers receivers, I was thinking, oh, I don't know, but I was thinking Bucks receivers, Vikings receivers, not Bucks receivers, Vikings. Oh yeah, you know that's a thing. At least Mike yeah. Evans doesn't have to line up against Justin Jefferson, right? So right. that's yeah. Yeah, so then as soon as that started to click, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And and look, since 2018, Baker Mayfield has the best completion percentage with a minimum of 2,000 pass attempts when his receivers have less than one yard of separation. The best in the NFL, 38.5% completion percentage. Some little big league stuff right there. Yeah. Yeah, so you take a look at at his ability to fit the ball in tight windows, which is better than anybody else in the NFL since 2018, going up against two of the best one-on-one receivers in the NFL in both Evans and Godwin, you could really take advantage of, of a lackluster Vikings pass defense in, least, in terms of... going back to last year, that's a fair statement to say. So that that could really be pretty interesting uh, seeing how that plays out. I mean, we could end up, you know, I, and I'm rewinding the clock all the way back to, to Fitz Magic. We could end up with like some 49 to 38 or 43 or whatever kind of absolute shootout where Jake Camarda and whoever the Vikings punter is just kind of chill on the sideline and eat hot dogs the entire time because both offenses just go off. 
I don't see that happening. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, that, yeah, that one I'm going to leave on like, leave for you. I think there will be points where there can be explosives. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll get into uh, a little bit more of what I think about the game itself and predictions uh, coming up. If we yeah. want to make that a segue. Those uh, those weekly predictions are back. So who will be Evans player of the game? And who wins week one on Sunday? That is coming up in just a moment here on Locked on Bucks. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you're going to have. As I mentioned, I got some club level seats for my son Beckett and I to go see the Tampa Bay Lightning take on the Columbus Blue Jackets in Columbus in November. My dad has just downloaded the game time app because he's going to be in Florida in October and wants to catch himself a little bit of Rays playoff baseball and game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. The game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best prices. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Wrapping things up here on a WTSP Wednesday edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. And Evan, segment three is segment three, buddy. It's back. And we're talking predictive player of the game. We're talking score prediction. But first and foremost, we got to start off with that bold prediction. There were two that I was thinking about. Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to choose one. I'll tell you what the, uh, I wanted to go three turnovers forced in this game, but I ended up going with 150 rushing yards from the Bucks, And I think that's bold okay. considering whatever the hell we watched last year with this rushing offense. So that's going to be my bold prediction of this contest, but, um, you know, little, I won't get credit uh, if I get the other one right, but maybe maybe a add a boy get them next time uh, if they yeah. force three turnovers. I'll give you a half a point. Half a point. It'll be like a half a sack because it's a half of a prediction. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. All right. Who is your predictive player of the game? This is kind of a bold prediction as well, but uh, assuming. Matt Kalijah can't, he's going to be on the field. But even, even if not, I think I think Joe Tryon Shoyanka is going to impress us. It's put up or shut up time. I like the little snippets we saw from the preseason. And I believe he can make an impact in this contest. Um, you know, let's say one and a half sacks, maybe a force. Turn, you know, force fumble, something like that. Something where we go and we say, hey, oh, did we finally see the the potential come to life? I, I can see that conversation happening on Monday. So I think my player of the game is going to be on the defensive side of the ball. And for the Bucks to win, they're going to have to pressure Kirky. Uh, if you, anybody who watched the Netflix series, you know that the man – Man, uh, he'll eat some sacks back there. So mm -hmm. I, I think the opportunities will be there for this defense to really create pressure. They need to, um, especially when Justin Jefferson's on the other side. And uh, I think Joe Tryon Shank is going to be that dude. So um, that's that's my my bold prediction player of the game. So um, you can give me a, another half a point if that that works out in my favor as well. Well, you'd you'd get the full point for, for full that point, one. but I want I want a point and a half. I want, I want extra credit. 
Okay, fair enough. And, you know, going back again, if you haven't listened to yesterday's episode, please go back and do so. But I, I said at the top of this show, we named three offensive players and three defensive players that were the most important to the success of the Buccaneers. I named two on offense and one on defense. My one on defense is Joe Tryon Shoyinka. He's got to get it going. You know, 48 pressures, but only four sacks. Like, got to step those numbers up. And there's no better time to do it than in the first game of the season. So we got the run game going off. We got Joe Tryon Shoyinka striking fear into the heart of Kirk Cousins in the backfield. So all this adds up to a Buccaneers win. What's the score? I've, I've been on record for a while now saying that this is a game I believe the Buccaneers go on the road and they win. All right. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a tough one. I'm having 24 to 20 Buccaneers, but I think Tampa Bay matches up well with what the Vikings have out there. A little bit of what David said. I don't think the Vikings are as good as their record said last year. Um, I, I don't think the Buccaneers are as bad as everyone wants to make them this year. I believe... This is a, a big opportunity for the Bucs to start the season on the right foot, get the dub, head home, hosting Chicago, to which I, I would say that that's probably a must win considering their next two games would be against the Eagles and at the Saints, which I'm not as optimistic about when looking at the schedule. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a bold kind of guy. That's how I like my coffee. And I'm, I'm picking the six-point underdogs for the win. All and right. if you know me, I'm not a homer, so I'm not. I don't, is, I don't. I don't pander to the audience. I, this is what I believe. I truly believe it. That is absolutely 100 percent true. I am still of the mindset where I, I try to be as as fair and impartial in my predictions as possible. But if but James's I'm, predictions all worked out, the Buccaneers would be 16 and one. <laughs> well, no, not not quite. But I'm not going to pick them to lose to the Saints. Won't do it. Will not. Can't do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. Do can't, it. Can't do Wouldn't it. Wouldn't be prudent at this it. juncture. Um, and, you know, last time Derek Carr faced Baker Mayfield, it was when he had been with the Rams for two days and led a fourth quarter comeback. So, oh, but we'll go. save that for uh, the week crossover four. in yeah. week three. Coming week up four. tomorrow, or week four. Coming up tomorrow, we have the first crossover of the year where David and Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings are going to get together and talk about this game. So make sure that you are coming back to check that out. And just a reminder, Friday episodes are live at 7.30 on YouTube. We are going to wait until we get the final injury report. So all season long, we're going live on YouTube at 7.30 on Fridays for the Friday episode. So we got Locked On Thursday, right after WTSP Wednesday, followed by live Locked On Bucks on Friday. In the meantime, if you've got questions, thoughts, topics, anything I at all, of course, you can leave those in the YouTube comments or you can DM us on Twitter at Locked On Bucks. We want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener review every single day. Make sure you're checking out everything that Evan is doing at 10 Tampa Bay and at 10 Tampa Bay.com. Check out my work over at BucksNation.com. Follow everyone on Twitter at Locked On Bucks at JRCO underscore Bucks, Matt E. Klosky, WTSP. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Locked on Bucks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. 